Got an Epson 2720 inkjet printer set up for sublimation. The nozzles are clogged. This isn't mine, this is someone else's. Mine is right down here and it's working fine. And we're going to go through how to clean these nozzles when the regular cleaning cycle doesn't work. Coming up. Hi, I'm Roger. Welcome to the loft above the shop. And what I've got here is an Epson 2720. It has been set up for sublimation printing. And the problem is it hadn't been used in a long time and the nozzles are clogged. And when you go to do the regular cleaning cycle, it, it doesn't clear them. In fact, as the more you do it, the worse it seems to get. Uh, there is a power cleaning method you can use that you can get from the Epson website. It'll explain how to do it. There are some problems with that. On these uh, lower cost Epson printers, and I know they're still expensive, but this is a, a lower end one. Where does that ink go when you run a cleaning cycle? It's got to go somewhere. Uh, there are pads that the nozzles run against, and I'm not going to get into the whole technical thing about how a printer works. But there is what they call a maintenance tank that is within the printer. And on the more expensive printers, the higher end ones, you know, the $1,000 large format and so on, that tank is replaceable. That maintenance tank is replaceable. On these lower end ones, it is not. If you do a power cleaning cycle, it can use as much as a third of your ink tank volume. That ink then goes into the maintenance tank. When that maintenance tank gets full, it triggers a chip in the printer. It says, we'll tell you to call Epson. You know, contact them and they'll tell you, okay, your maintenance tank's full. Too bad, buy a new printer. So we don't want ink going to the maintenance uh, tank. So what's the thing to do? Print sheets of paper, one after another, as many as it takes, to get those heads cleaned up and those nozzles freed up by flowing ink through them onto just paper. That way the ink's going on the paper and you can throw the paper away or whatever and you're not affecting your maintenance tank. Does this work? Most of the time. And we're going to find out with this one. First thing I'm going to do is run a nozzle check on it. We'll see how it looks right now, and then I'll explain to you how I run these color sheets through here. Okay, so I got the printer turned on here, and we'll need to get to the tools part of it. Maintenance. Nozzle check. Click OK to proceed. Load paper. Of course, I've got some just regular copy paper in here. Don't use your sublimation paper for this. And just click on print. Okay, and this is going to give you a printout, and hopefully you can see this. But you see uh, how many broken lines we have and how tore up this is. So what I'm going to do is run some files that I made through here that will print each one of these primary colors. Okay, so how did I come up with this formula to run the four primary colors? The black, yellow, magenta, and cayenne, cyan, depends how you want to pronounce it. I made sheets in Microsoft Word using the hex code for each one of those colors that matches the ink manufacturer and they're all pretty much close. And I'm not going to get into hexadecimal programming or anything like that. Uh, there'll be a link at the end of this video or in the description where you can download these files and I've set it up as a PDF and we have a website we're just starting up with some things and there's a a download section in there and they'll be in there and you can download them for free. It doesn't cost you anything. That way you don't have to try to create these. But what I will do here is run each color on a full sheet and this will start to clear the nozzles up. So we'll run one here and I'll start with, uh, actually I'll just do all four colors and I'll just hit print. Now in properties, you want to go to this and uh, you want to have set it for high quality and under more options, you want to make sure this high speed is turned off. So you don't want it printing at high speed, you want to take its time because you want to get those nozzles cleared. So once you're happy with all that, just click OK. This will use four sheets of paper. 
and you definitely want to make sure your ink tanks have adequate amount of ink in them. So this is going to use quite a bit of ink, but at least it's not going to your uh, maintenance tank. And I need to clear some things up here. And I need to figure out why this didn't print because I may have sent it to the wrong printer. So I got two printers hooked up to the same computer. I didn't even think about that. Well, let me fix that. Okay, now we got things set the right way. I never even thought about having two of the same printers connected to the same computer. It didn't even dawn on me to change that. This is going to start to show you how bad things are. So there's the black. As you can see, that's not too good. There's a magenta. It's a little better, but there's still lines in it. So we'll have to run that one again. And there's a yellow and it's it's actually pretty good. It's very solid. I don't see any lines in it, so I may not need to run that color again. Okay, for this one I'm running just the black first and I'm running I'm going to run two copies of this because the black is really bad and I need to get some things cleared up there. Well, we'll let this get going here. Okay, as you can see here, I still got a lot of lines. So what I'm going to do now is set this to run probably 5 of them. And we'll see if that improves things. Okay, I did make one change here. I changed the uh, paper type to uh, premium presentation paper mat because I know that takes more ink. And we want to use as much ink as possible through these nozzles to try to get them flushed out. So we'll let this run. I uh, got it set for four copies and we'll see if it improves. So as you can see, things are starting to improve, but we still have lines in it. So I'm going to let it keep running. And just in case you were curious about how to uh, actually do the power cleaning where it puts all that ink into your maintenance tank. I did print it out here and this is available on Epson's website. There's two ways to do it. One is from the uh, touchpad on the uh, printer and the other is from your computer. To get it from your touchpad on your printer, you would push the power button and the help button, that's a little question mark button, at the same time and hold it until the power cleaning screen comes up and you just follow the instructions on the LCD. If you do run a power cleaning and it doesn't completely clean, you're supposed to wait 12 hours before doing it again. And to access it from the computer, you would right click on the icon for your product in the right side of the Windows taskbar, click the up down arrow, you right click, select printer settings, collect maintenance tab, and then power cleaning and it will run you through it. And there again, if the power cleaning does not cure the problem, you need to wait 12 hours before running it again. Uh, the directions are also there for a Mac, but I'm not familiar with a Mac, so I'm not going to try to explain any of that stuff, but the directions are there. And once again, I uh, advise not to do use the power cleaning function unless there's some kind of really dire emergency where you need to try to do that. This is a much better way. It, does, it basically does the same thing. It's just not putting the ink into your maintenance tank. It's putting it on paper, prolonging the life of the printer. Now there is a note on here about uh, power cleaning that it consumes a lot of ink. So you definitely want to make sure your ink tanks are full or at least three quarters full. And the power, it even also says on here it'll cause the ink pads to reach their capacity sooner. When it reaches the end of its service life, the product stops working and you have to contact Epson for support. And that's what they're going to tell you. Too bad, so sad, buy a new printer. So we'll let this keep running here on the black. It looks like it's getting a little bit better each time. We may need to run who knows how many pages to get these uh, nozzles cleared because this printer had sat for a long time without being used. So one of the things you should do is run the, your printer at the very minimum at least once a week. If nothing else, just run a document check, or I should say a nozzle check, or run some simple four color document through there. Uh, it doesn't have to be uh, actual sublimation print. You can do it on regular copy paper. Just That helps to keep those nozzles clean. It keeps the ink from drying up in there. Okay, as you can see here, this is where we started. And this is where we're at now. We still have lines in it. This is still just working on the black. 
Um, I'm going to run probably four more sheets of black here, but first I need to uh, add some ink to this tank. And I do have some sublimation ink, so I need to get that loaded first. I don't want to run that tank dry. And I'll just let that fill up. I can watch my ink level down here. That's not a full bottle, so I know it's not going to overflow. And there we go. One thing nice about this particular type, this particular brand, Haipu, I never have any problems with it. And it's this particular one is made for this printer, so you're not messing around with needles and bottles and trying to fill it up so other some funky way. So I'll get four more of these going here and see if we can't get things to come out a little better. Okay, in case you were curious about uh, how to make your own color blocks, if you wish to do that, in uh, a word processing document, I, I use Microsoft Word, you would create a shape. In this case, a square. I made it the whole size of the page. You could do four squares on one page if you want to run all four colors at once. And then when you click on Fill to fill that box with color, you would click on More Colors and then Custom, and it will give you a place to put in a hex code. The hex codes are, for black, six zeros. Not the letter O, but six zeros. That's the easiest one. Next, for the, your magenta, it's F. F, zero, zero, F, F. It's capital F. For your yellow, it is F, 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 zero, zero. That's four F's and two zeros. For your cayenne, or cyan, depending on how you want to pronounce it, I've, I hear it both ways, it's zero, zero, F, 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 F. So there's your four colors. That's the hex codes for them. Uh, there again at the end of the video here, in the, or I should say in the description, is a link to where you can go and download this already made up in a PDF and run it yourself. And it's not just for an Epson printer. It'll work on any printer. I've, I use the same thing on a HP 8100 we have in the office that the uh, heads have got plugged up on. And after running four or five sheets, uh, on each color, it's back to being perfect. Okay, I haven't been running the video here for all of these I'm printing. This is the uh, 16th sheet that's printing here right now. And as you can see, we're finally black without any lines. Uh, like so. Like I say, it took 16 sheets of paper to get to that level. Of course, this is not black black because this is sublimation ink, not regular ink. So it looks more of a gray color. So now let's move on to another color here, but I, before I go to the cyan, I do want to refill that ink tank. And I'll just let that fill. I can watch the level here. This does use quite a bit of ink when you're having to print this many pages, but it does save on your maintenance tank. And I guess while I'm at it, I may as well fill all the tanks. That way I won't have to go back and do it. Okay, we take off here with the cyan. And uh, as you can see, this is the uh, first sheet we printed out. And we'll see how uh, this comes out now. I've got it set to do two more. This one wasn't as bad as the black, but it's still got a lot of lines in it. Okay, as you can see, we're getting better here than this one here. There are still lines in it, so we'll have to see how many more pages I need to print before those lines go away. Okay, so as you can see here, it is getting better, but it still has lines. It's still not perfect. So there again, we're going to have to keep running sheets until it comes out solid color. Yeah, our last one coming through here is perfect with no lines in it. You can see here I've got lined up on top of the printer where we started and how it's progressively gotten better. Now we have a solid color with no lines. I'll move on. I'll do the magenta next. Pull the original magenta sheet out of here. So here it is and it has a few lines in it, not too many. This shouldn't take uh, too many runs. Okay, got the other magenta printed out, and as you can see, hopefully you can see, there are absolutely no lines in it at all. There were a few in the first test sheet, there are absolutely none in this one. So we'll move on, I'll do one in yellow. Okay, here's our yellow coming out, and I added a black border to this just to see if there'd be any broken lines in it, since we're having so much trouble with the black at the beginning. That appears to be perfect, I see no lines in this anywhere. There were only a couple lines in the original one when we first did the print. So this obviously cleared everything. Okay, that's done printing. I'll take it up here. We'll lay it next to the original. 
and of course the ink's not completely dry yet that's why there's a color difference here but there are absolutely no lines in it next I'm going to run a nozzle check as we did at first you saw how that came out we'll see how that looks okay so here's our nozzle check here after running all these pages we'll compare it to the original one here that we printed and you can see the huge difference huge difference okay we'll do the comparison here this one down here is from my printer and this one is from the printer we just cleaned up as you can see they are both identical no missing lines no gaps all the graphics came out perfect so there's how we clean the nozzles on this Epson ET2720 printer this procedure also works with other printers it greatly increases the life of the printer especially in the maintenance section as I said on this particular uh, printer the maintenance tank is not a replaceable object you'll end up having to get another printer this works on HP it works of course with Epson it works with Canon um, this type of thing is a good way to clean your heads it does take time this took me well over an hour and probably 30 some sheets of paper but it also saved the life of the printer either way you're going to use up a bunch of ink that's just the way it is so if you got anything out of this appreciate getting a thumbs up always helps the channel of course we're always looking for subscribers i'm roger in the loft printers cleaning them up thanks for watching we'll see you in the next one